Good afternoon. This is Charles Felix, South Florida Hospital News, editor and owner. And today we're doing our CEO interview with Matt Gardner from North Shore Medical Center, a tenant hospital. Good afternoon, Matt. How are you? Good afternoon, Charles. I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, taking the time to interview me. Well, it's my pleasure. So tell me, uh, tell, what, tell your position within the, within the hospital, Matt. Yeah, so I'm uh, the chief executive officer at uh, North Shore Medical Center. I've been here since January 4th of this year. So relatively new to them. Oh, great. Tell us a little bit about your, 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 your family background growing up or where have you been in, in South Florida or other places? Absolutely. I'll we'll give you a brief rundown. It's a little bit of a unique background. I was actually born in uh, Tasmania, Australia. So I uh, started my life on the other side of the world. Wow. Yep. Moved over to uh, Southwest Florida, specifically Port Charlotte when I was three. Grew up uh, over on that coast. A little bit different than down here in Southeast Florida, a little bit slower of a pace. But um, spent my childhood years over there. Uh, moved up to Orlando, went to UCF for my undergrad career, and then uh, ended up in Gainesville for grad school. And I've uh, been down here in South Florida for about seven years now. I uh, spent some time up in Delray, a couple of years in Fort Lauderdale, and now down here in Miami. That's great. So, uh, so, so great educational background and really getting to know the South Florida market through a variety of different counties, it looks like. Yeah, definitely. And actually growing up too, you know, both my parents worked in healthcare. My dad was a, a social worker in a long-term care setting. And my mom was an occupational therapist slash rehab director uh, for a number of long-term care facilities on the West Coast. So that's kind of how I got my first exposure to healthcare. Any brothers and sisters? Uh, I got a half brother. He's, oh, okay. uh, he's uh, just starting over at FAU. So uh, he's joined me down here in South Florida. Nice, challenging career over at FAU. So. <laughs> yeah, he's liking it so far. It's been a Kind of interesting for him getting started, especially with COVID. So a lot of virtual classes for him, but he's he's managing. As you began your your career into healthcare, at what point did you realize that you wanted to become a healthcare professional, Matt? You know, again, the, that early exposure through my parents uh, to healthcare really steered me in that direction initially. Actually, I had a family friend who was a CEO of a hospital over in Port Charlotte. Uh, I spoke with quite a bit as I was trying to figure out which route I wanted to go. You know, once I got that initial exposure to the field, you know, I, I felt that combining my acumen in terms of, you know, wanting to get into business and also the opportunity to help people uh, in healthcare, really tying that all together through that initial exposure was really key for me in terms of uh, wanting to pursue this as uh, my career of choice. And so uh, would you say that that CEO or, or kind of reviewing your your journey through the healthcare space, starting out. What were some of your jobs you worked at and who was and who were your mentors during that period of time from, uh, from move to move? Absolutely. So, you know, majority of my professional experience in healthcare has been with Tenet. You know, I started out with Tenet while I was in grad school over at uh, UF. I, I actually did a three month internship down here with the, uh, the former South Florida region. So I uh, worked closely with Marsha Powers and her homegrown internship and fellowship program. So it was during that first three months of my internship where I, I really got a taste for what the field has to offer, really what, what you do in this job. And uh, it really excited me because, you know, going back and sharing experiences with my fellow classmates when I was in grad school, hearing about the fact that, you know, they got these opportunities at some of the larger, I guess you'd say more well-known organizations mm -hmm. such as AO and Johns Hopkins. You know, they didn't get nearly the experience that I did starting out with tenant down here because I had, you know, hospital based responsibilities over at Delray Medical Center to start. I was also able to take on some uh, some regional level projects for the 10 hospitals that tenant operates down here. So um, really getting that all access look at how a system operates and also day to day hospital operations was really what you know led me down this path to want to stick with it. That's great. What does your typical day look like at the hospital? Well, oh, maybe typical never, day, whichever is whichever <laughs> easier. <laughs> really, there, there's never a, a typical day, I'd say. You know, really the only constant day to day that, that I have is our, our daily leadership huddle in the morning where we bring all the hospital leaders together, departmental leadership, and you know, talk about various things that are going on in the hospital that day, census, ED volume, uh, OR scheduled cases, those type of things. 
and we really get to uh, set the tone for the rest of the day, see what lies ahead. And uh, you know, during this first four months now that I've been in this position, it's been a lot of uh, a lot of meetings, getting to know who the players are here. So it's a lot of shuffling between those meetings. You know, as as I get farther into my first year in this role, really looking forward to uh, getting out more on the floors and engaging with our frontline staff, just to hear you know how we're doing from their aspect and see where they need some assistance so we can focus our efforts on that. Last year, actually almost 12 months ago to today per se, the COVID situation hit uh, all over the world, uh, especially in South Florida, we got hit pretty hard. You know, what were your main challenges? So I was COO at Florida Medical Center for uh, roughly five years. So I spent what I would say the, you know, the biggest crunch time as it relates to COVID and dealing with it uh, over there at FNC. But, you know, from a leadership standpoint, I can just say that, you know, people look to you day to day to get very clear guidance and, you know, how this pandemic played out for everybody was, you know, very unknown. So I think the most challenging thing was being able to figure out how to lead through a lot more gray area than black and white. Um, because like I said, you could be telling people to do one thing one day based on the, the best guidance that's available from the experts. And then you have to turn around the following day and have to kind of pivot and change course based on new guidance. So I'd say that that was definitely one of the biggest challenges. And, uh, you know, even now, um, I think one of the biggest things we, we deal with is, you know, the toll that this has taken on our staff. I mean, they've been working around the clock. You know, we've, we've felt, faced a number of challenges in terms of, you know, staff shortages with people taking you know, contracts to travel elsewhere for higher rates. So um, really keeping the teams engaged and uh, taking care of the teams has been very challenging for you know, not only me and my various roles, but I think all the, the health systems down here in South Florida and really nationwide. What keeps you up at night? Yeah, I mean, specifically as it relates to the toll that it's taken on our teams, you know, we're, you know, luckily numbers have reduced quite a bit and they've stayed relatively stable where they're at. So to me, it's really focusing on recognizing our teams, doing little things to engage with them. I mean, luckily we have nurses week starting up on Thursday and then hospital week all next week. So we're, we're focusing our efforts on doing some things to uh, focus on recognizing those team members that have stayed the course with us, done whatever it takes to take care of our patients. And then also really focusing efforts on how do we meet some of these gaps that we're facing now as a result of COVID. So for instance, as it relates to staffing, you know, how are we really ramping up recruitment efforts to, uh, to backfill some of these open positions that we have? And then more globally, I would say, as it relates to providing health care to our communities in general, you know, we were very concerned about, you know, the number of people that have likely pushed off their care, especially as it relates to receiving that care in the hospital setting and the negative consequences associated with that. So really getting the message out there that, uh, you know, we've put a number of protocols in place to make sure that our teams are providing safe care to anybody coming into our four walls and uh, getting that message out to the community. Because ultimately, you know, we're here to take care of people and we wanna make sure that people aren't scared to come get the care that they, they desperately need. That's been a big challenge for healthcare all over. People trying to feel more comfortable coming back into the hospital setting. Absolutely. And, and finally, what would you, you know, a young careerist will be watching this hopefully, what piece of advice would you give a young careerist to move through the healthcare system, what should you have top of mind when thinking about going into your healthcare career and continuing in healthcare career? I mean, first of all, make sure that your, your passions are lying in the right place. Again, the reason why I wanted to get into healthcare was, you know, the, the opportunity to help the communities that we serve. I mean, ultimately having the opportunity to do that isn't something that you see in your day-to-day -day jobs. So um, as it relates to early careers getting started out, you know, I was presented a lot of opportunities very early in my career. I mean, I stepped in the COO role roughly two years after finishing up grad school. So the biggest thing that I would advise people to do is uh, just make sure that you're not backing down from any opportunities as they present themselves and make sure that you're you know, taking time to identify your mentors and really tap into their experience, what they have to offer. By no means am I the smartest person working in this hospital. You know, it's really me. Uh, identifying those people that I can lean on, making sure I'm asking the right questions and relying on the subject matter experts to, uh, to guide our decisions. Coming up as a young person in the field, yeah, you need to project a sense of confidence and competence as you're uh, moving through your different roles. But, you know, always know that there's never a bad time to ask questions, especially from those who've done it before.
You know, the, the mentors that I've had coming up have uh, really guided me in terms of developing my leadership style. So I think I can look to uh, each of my former bosses slash mentors and really point to something that I've pulled from their leadership style. So really focusing your efforts on that and uh, relying on those that have been there before is very important. That's great. Matt, I appreciate you spending a little time with us today. Uh, thank you. And uh, as we kind of emerge, hopefully, from this COVID-19 situation, uh, I wish you and the hospital the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you.